something that can be called broadly like stop uh, the Ukrainization of Poland. And this is a very broad narrative and in which you can put a lot of different things. We once again have the certain theme that the state of Ukraine is not to be trusted. So in the perspective of Ukraine's EU membership, it just undermines the image of Ukraine as a possible EU European partner. Hello and welcome to Ukraine in Flames, a special project by Ukraine Media Center, an NGO Euro-Atlantic course, and I'm your host, Maroslava Yeremkiv. In 2022 and 2023, Polish media were and remain in first place among European countries in terms of the number of fakes sent by Russia. Currently, the focus of these messages is the claim that Poles do not have enough resources to provide good social assistance because everything is going to the Ukrainians. Additionally, Russian media portray Ukrainian refugees as an uncultured group that doesn't respect Poles. There have also been messages claiming that the defeat of Ukraine is obvious and predictable and that all resources spent in Ukraine are actually wasted, so they should not be provided. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the main pro-Russian narratives and disinformation actors after February 24, 2022 in the information space of Poland and assess Russia's ability to undermine support for the idea of European integration of Ukraine in Poland through information informational means. If you want to learn more about the subject, please continue watching this video and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our videos in the future. Videos of anti-Ukrainian rallies against the Ukrainization of Poland are appearing from time to time on Russian Telegram channels. The videos show gatherings of people holding flags with the national symbols of Poland, as well as posters of the Confederation of the Polish Crown Party. In the description of the videos, it is noted that the Poles are demanding to stop the flow of Ukrainians into Poland, to drive everyone out of the country and to stop financing at the expense of Polish taxpayers. The so-called anti-Ukrainian movement Ukrainization of Poland began as early as 2022. It is actively promoted by the Polish Party Confederation, and it is their name that is clearly identified on the posters carried by Polish protesters. The situation with the Confederation is a vivid example of how Russian propaganda, with the help of certain groups, tries to reduce the trust of Poles in Ukrainians and discourage them from supporting Ukraine. All the theses promoted by pro-Russian politicians in Poland are Kremlin narratives, which the Kremlin actively uses to discredit Ukrainians. Maciej Makulski, contributing editor with the New Eastern Europe magazine, will talk more about the anti-Ukrainian narratives that have been circulating in the Polish informational space over the past year. When it comes to anti-Ukraine uh, narratives in Polish information space, I decided to somehow just for, for this meeting divide them into like two, two broad categories. First is like ad hoc narratives that occur in specific uh, periods of time, like electoral campaigns. And there are also some like more permanent narratives that are valid uh, all, all the time. Or, and, and I will start from the from the latter. One of the example is something that can be called broadly like stop uh, the Ukrainization of Poland. And this is a very broad narrative, and in which you can put a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And it is very often combined or occur in the same time where we have, for instance, anti narrative, uh, anti immigrant narrative. And uh, here I can uh, give you some examples done uh, uh, during the uh, uh, electoral campaign in, in 2023, this parliamentary campaign. Uh, there, there was an uh, anti-immigrant campaign uh, utilized by uh, both uh, parties like Law and Justice, which was then in power, and Confederacja in English Confederation, which was which is further to the right, located on the Polish political spectrum, 
And they utilize above this anti-migrant uh, uh, narrative, but later in the campaign, I observed that uh, uh, Confederation uh, uh, saw that uh, they can uh, actually uh, attract more voters by uh, including also Ukrainians uh, besides this anti-Ukrainian narrative. And they were, uh, for instance, messaging uh, a lot about uh, Ukrainians who uh, get welfare uh, support from, from Polish state. It was... Uh, because this, this welfare support, the social support from Polish state was one of the main topics during the campaign. It was also used by Confederation to uh, to present Ukrainians negatively. And there was such a, like, they were, uh, they were saying, like, uh, zero social welfare for Ukrainians in Poland. So that's why uh, I started with this uh, ad hoc and permanent distinction of narratives because we had like this like you know stop ukrainization of poland as such as a broad categories but during the electoral campaign we per more we had more specific uh, uh have the more specific sub uh, narratives within this this uh, big one world one um, one word uh, about the actors because i think this is uh, this is quite important we have uh, three uh, political parties that are openly pro-Russia and they also play a role in, in conducting this anti-narrative, uh, anti-Ukrainian narrative. And this, uh, uh, this, this, these parties are marginal, yeah? Mm, they didn't manage to play a, a role during all these free electoral campaigns. But I, I want to highlight it today because uh, I think that biggest problem with that is that they manage to be registered, which is different to, for instance, what we experienced several years ago, where uh, there was a case of also pro-Russian party change, uh, which uh, faced difficulties at the stage of registration. So something has slightly changed. But as I said, those three parties uh, remain marginal, and let's hope it will remain as such. And confederation, which I just give, gave you an example how how they did what they did during uh, electoral campaign in 2023, is a bit a different uh, political actor because they, uh, first of all, they are a conglomerate of uh, different political uh, forces movements. Uh, they were they are not perfectly united, so not everything what they say about. Uh, Ukraine and Russia is shared by other uh, components of this specific uh, coalition, but within uh, this uh, conglomerate of different groupings, you you have uh, politicians who are either openly or or are pro, pro Russia or at least play with, with those narratives which are pro, pro Russian. Mm. And uh, you have also those uh, groupings or those political leaders who utilize more this uh, anti-Ukraine narratives based on this uh, su social support for Ukrainians, for instance. At the beginning of 2023, the Polish fact-checking organization Demagog and the Media Monitoring Institute jointly investigated the sources of anti-Ukrainian propaganda. The results of the study proved that representatives of the Confederation Party most often post negative publications about Ukraine on their social media pages. The key narratives are Ukraine is colonizing Poland. Ukraine is Ukrainizing Poland. Ukrainians are a priority in the system of providing medical and educational services while Poles are waiting or being refused. Poles are being dragged into the war. Military aid to Ukraine is a disarmament of Poland's armed forces, and Ukraine is ungrateful for the help. Julian Dobrovolsky from InfoOps Poland Foundation will elaborate more on this. We've been monitoring the, the information space for quite some time, also before the war, of course. But uh, what we are seeing is the three basic vectors that are being used when it comes to disinformation targeting both Ukraine as well as presenting the Ukraine in the eyes of the West. So 
probably my Czech colleagues will confirm that by nodding or <laughs> showing uh, OK. But what we've been uh, seeing are those three vectors. The first one is the vector based on presenting the Ukraine as a country that is unstable, that is kind of a fallen state, that it goes towards self-destructions, while using this vector, the Ukraine and Ukrainian Ukraine state and Ukrainian people are being divided by the Russian narrative. It is only attacking the state, but not attacking the people as the society of Ukraine. It just wants to create this distinction for the people to make it more appealing to the people and also present the narrative as a more probably easier to be accepted by a neutral listener such as a Polish society or Czech society. The second vector being here is the presenting of Ukraine in the eyes of the West as a corrupted state that uh, dwells in uh, some kind of shady business, including the uh, selling the equipment that was sent from uh, the West uh, so probably studying the arms, the munitions, the uh, the help that was given by the societies of the West. So here we once again have the certain theme that the state of Ukraine is not to be trusted. So in the perspective of Ukraine's EU membership, it just undermines the image of Ukraine as a possible e U European partner towards the societies. The further vector I want to mention is threatening the societies by presenting the Ukraine and the conflict in Ukraine as something that will directly affect them by saying that if we will support Ukraine we will end up in the war because of Ukraine, not because of the Russians attacking Ukraine. No, we will end up in the war because of the Ukrainians who were attacked. Well, we will probably agree here that it sounds absurd, but by being presented in a certain softer manner, some people start to question that. And then, it is being supported by a certain narratives related to the to the future so-called occupation of Ukraine by the Poland or United States of po United States and Poland and so on and so on. So those are the three vectors that we've been seeing being constantly used both towards the West, as well as towards the Ukrainian society as well. Because if we are creating the fear of the so-called and soon-to-happen occupation of Ukraine by the Western uh, uh, forces, then it is something that is also being given to the Ukrainian society to make them question which route is everything going. You've been watching a special project by Ukraine Media Center and Euro-Atlantic course dedicated to the Russian-Ukrainian war, Ukraine in flames. In the description under this video, you can find information on how you can help Ukraine fight Russian aggression. If you find our work useful, please like and share this video. Slava Ukraini!